Hi guys and welcome back to what could be the final episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon um, as we know it. Well, no, probably just the last one, but that could all change, of course. It depends on what happens in today's game. If you're excited about it, do drop a like on the video. I don't know. I'm not going to set a like target. We'll see what happens in the game and then we can start talking about that sort of stuff. It's Wimbledon against Juventus. I've done nothing in the meantime because, of course, there was nothing really to do. We've just had to rest the players. Nobody's got injured. Nobody's come back from injury, which means we are going to be missing exactly the same players as the last game. I've suited up, of course. I'm still wearing the same suit from the previous one because it was literally like 13 minutes ago. Um, game actually was quite fast in getting us to this point, I must say. So, we could look at their team in a minute, but basically I've decided to just go with our full strength, basically. Fabio, okay, fair enough. He's not got full match fitness yet, but it's better than it was last week. And it, if it, nothing else, we can get a bit more game time out of him today. And obviously our bench options, again, match fitness just seems to really dwind dwindle towards the end of the season. Uh, Neves, again, is going to have to come in for Mankio. Um, so... This is going to be the lineup for the Champions League final, I think. Uh, yes, it will. We're going to go with Peter, Fabio, Baltam, Salvi, Achebar in the middle, not Masek, because he's just, I don't know, I just happened to have a nurse about the match finish. We've got no reserve games at the moment, which is a pain, and I haven't had time to schedule any. Um, Farmer, Rodriguez, Gomez, Ballesta, Aiseki, and Galfrascoli. Ballesta's done okay in those last few games, and I feel like he deserves his spot in the Champions League final squad, uh, given that we can't use Cabrera. Apologies if you can hear birds singing, it's really hot in this room. It's just one of those things. So. We're going to go with the attacking style of play because the fact is we could play defensive in the Champions League final. We could, but we'd probably get our asses handed to us. There's no point in, you know, we built this tactic that works really well, hopefully, and, you know, you guys have told me that it works well for you. We might as well just go out there and see if we can steamroll them. I don't know. I mean, one thing I would say is that I've played two Champions League finals on FM ever. Two ever. And you've seen both of them because one was Portsmouth and one was Red Star Belgrade. And I have won both of them. That's what I would say. So I've got that in my favour, I suppose. Now... Have we met them before? I feel like we have. Part of me feels like we've met Juventus before at some point. Why is it now frozen? There we go. So we beat them. Yeah, in fact, look at this. We've actually beaten Juventus um, twice already, having played them. Uh, albeit a little while ago um, in the Champions League. I think that was our first season in the Champions League. We beat them home and away. So there's that. Obviously, they've improved a lot since then, but they're not top of their domestic league. Lazio are currently winning uh, Serie A at the moment. And Torino have a guy... What is going on here? Okay, Torino have a guy who is Australian uh, leading their goal scoring, which is cool, kind of cool. He's a regen, obviously. Um, now, goal action, we're already fine from the last game, of course, aren't we? Right, um, we're going with this kit today, apparently, even though we're designated as the home team. What, why would... I don't... Okay. Um, oh, why, why do I keep checking that? Anyway, oh, this is going to get... I don't know. Th those systems... Oh, it says that they're vulnerable to 4-4-2. Now, our system can kind of be a 4-4-2 at times uh but we'll just have to play this by ear this is a big big moment uh, this is the biggest moment of the entire save i feel like we've got the better squad of the two i feel like we're better on paper but that doesn't mean much really unless you can be better on the night and you know we've had some weird performances in the past that everything could go wrong baltam uh, someone asked me why oh fabio <gasps> The big game mentality. That is where we needed him to come up clutch and give us an early lead, something to hang on to. Uh, right, okay, more direct passing play. Let's just check this out straight off the bat. Um, so we're heading down the right, shocker. But our good passing so far has generally been fairly long, but I'm not going to dominate that right-hand side just yet. I want to make sure that we've got a chance to map out the game a little bit before we do that. Uh, okay. Ooh, Fabio's not doing that. I can't believe we're on extended highlights, and now it's really happening in this game. Sort of would be like one of those ones, even on extended, where nothing happens. Okay. Um, hmm. I kind of want to exploit both flanks at this point, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I think maybe exploiting the right flank, even though we're not showing too much promise down there, might not be such a bad idea. So we can get Baltam in at that far post and see what we're capable of. Salvi's free kick. Drops it short for Ballesta. Round the corner for Baltam! Yes! Sorry, I, I was checking. I know that the linesman doesn't move if he's offside, but actually what they do is they move back to the point where the offside took place, and I wasn't sure if that was happening. Wimbledon won, Juventus nil in the Champions League final, and who else? Who else could score the goal but Imran Baltam? This was a lovely work free kick as well. Salvi to Ballesta, who knocks it through the channel, but Baltam with the first time little finish, dinks it near post, and it is 1-0 Wimbledon in the Champions League final. I didn't even check what stadium we're playing in. We have the lead, and it's our only shot on target of the entire game so far, so there's that. Nobody's really created anything special so far. It has been an incredibly cagey match so far. Um, that is not what we're going to say. We're going to go with... Um, they're looking motivated. 
Yeah, okay, a bit of confidence gaining. That's what we wanted. I didn't want to listen to my assistant there. Often they make horrible decisions in these situations and say things like, you know, you've got to go win this. And it always puts pressure on the players, and we don't want that. This first half has been incredibly short. Uh, we are on extended highlights, right? Yes. Um, Juventus have done very little in this game so far. We've completed two crosses from here, and I do still feel like the going down this right might be our best course of action for the second half. Um... But it might just be one of those cagey games where it might just take a, a cheeky little goal like that from Imran Baltam to win it or something. I honestly don't know. We've yet to see anything from Raheem Sterling, which is pleasant since he was their danger man, according to my scouts, basically. Uh, Salvi cutting inside here. He's going all the way through. Can he pull it? it oh, I thought he was going to get a penalty for us there. Look at that dribbling ability on him, though. He really is astonishing. We're getting a lot more ball, uh, which is good. Can Fabio score in a Champions League final? I feel like of any player on this team... Oh! <laughs> We're 2 0 up, and he's not got his big hair, proving that he can do it without the big hair. Wimbledon 2, Juventus 0. We'll do it. Guys, we're on our way to doing it. I'm thinking to myself, can Fabio finally get the goal? If any player deserved to get a goal in a Champions League final, it's Fabio. He's the I think he's our longest serving player currently still in this first 11, having joined us in the Championship, and now to be playing in a Champions League final. Cleared away. Go on, win that by Esther. Knocks it down beautifully. Fabio with the goal. Great touch. Salvi, go on. Whips it across. Park. Peter's in. Oh, I thought I almost said Peter Parker then. Now we're starting to get a bit more of a grind through this one. It's 2-0 to Wimbledon, but it's not, we're not out of the woods yet. There's a lot more to come in this game, I feel. Um, we're still only 51 minutes played. This game is not done yet by a, by a long shot. Um, given how we've not dominated or anything, we've just scored two good goals. And that's great. That's really, really good. That's what we wanted. But I feel like Juve, if they push at us, might have a chance. At, what are you doing? Why are we left? All right, we've been leave, left ourselves outnumbered here. Caliero. Oh. Okay. I thought there was going to be a highlight on the end of that somewhere. Peter's done a... He's let the defender commit himself. Can he find a cross, though? Mm, goes back for Achebar. Can he find a cross? Or will he shoot? Goes back for Aseki. Just work the ball, guys. There we go. Achebar. Bit more space. Peter. Round the side for Salvi. Oh, my God. What a piece of play that is. Imran Baltan makes it 3-0 to Wimbledon in the Champions League final. He scored to... Wow. The, the most impressive thing about this is this pick out from Salvi. Watch this for a pass. He's on, in on goal and dinks it to the back post instead where Baltam is there to finish for his second of the game and his 31st goal of the season. We are 3-0 up in a Champions League final. How did we not win the league, by the way? I'm serious, how? Um, but hey, I guess over the full season, we just weren't good enough. Um, well, we were, we were, but City were just better. I think like we were good enough to win the league, but they were just better, if that makes sense. Right, okay. Um, wow. <laughs> wow, that's all I can really say here. Wow. Okay, so, um, I feel like we could just keep doing what we're doing at the moment. We're 3-0 up. 3-0 in the Champions League final. I feel like what was... We won 4-2 against Barcelona with Pompey, and I think it was 1-0 against Red Star. Uh, no, against PSG with Red Star. Okay, first change of the night is going to be Peter for Mateus, because Peter hasn't actually done a lot today so far. Um, he's been one of the weakest performer on the pitch, in fact, uh, for, for all his you know, wondrous play this year. He's not been good today. We're going to get Mateus on first, but I'm going to leave substitutes just in case they do come back. And, you know, the fact is we've not been that good. Three shots on target, three goals. It's ridiculous. Um, but we have been clinical with our chances. We've been great today. I've really, really been impressed. Oh, it looks like we're finally going to get what we deserve in this save, guys. It really does. But I'm not going to speak too soon. Anything could happen in the final 20 minutes of this match. You know what FM's like. We've conceded a three-goal lead once already in this save. Admittedly, it was Everton, um, not Juventus. So if anything, that gives us more credence to the fact that they could still do it. Um, but I don't really know if it, dropping deeper at this point is a really smart plan. We'll see if they keep knocking balls over the top. But at the moment, they're still playing it quite deep. Zan, oh, good save from Galfrascoli. Um, we're doing okay at the moment. I think our high line is actually doing okay. Sterling's ball. The third goal does give me that little bit of extra confidence that we can go on and take this all the way. Uh, oh, hello. Salvi. Goes to Fabio again. Surely not. Far. I'll tell you what, if anything, the patch seems to make this tactic even more ruthless. Uh, Fabio. Oh, God. I'm sweating here. Uh, Salvi takes a touch. Can he pull it back across? He can't. I, I am in shock right now. Wimbledon 4, Juventus 0. Imran Baltam has scored a hat-trick in a Champions League final. That is something I've never had before. Look at this. We've scored, with every shot on target, we've scored a goal with Salvi the perfect first touch, drops it across the box, and Baltam is in there, and it's 4-0. I don't even know what he's doing in the middle there. He should be out wide, really. And why is Salvi on the left-hand side? Was it because of a free kick or something? Three assists for Salvi, three goals for Imran Baltam. We can make some substitutions now, anyway. We're going to get a Massac on for Achebar, and tell you what, who else really deserves a, a run out today is, is Everton. I know Salvi's could have done more for us, but Everton has been a really strong servant to us. He scored the goal that leveled things up against Barcelona in the Champions League semis in a game that we really did not look like winning in the end. Uh, how have we won this 4-0?
It's like we genuinely have saved up all of that kind of good luck that we didn't get at earlier stages in the same. We've used it all up in one game. Baltan headed away. We're going to win it. We know we're going to win it, but the fact that we've won it in such... There we go. Wimbledon 4, Juventus 0. We've won the Champions League. And why don't they... I really hate that. Like, why don't they run off celebrating? We've won it. We've finally done it. And we've not only done it, but we've done it in style with a hat trick from Imran Baltan with his eighth goal in the Champions League and three more assists for the season for Salvi, which brings him, I think, to 45 assists. Insane. Join you guys in a sec. We got an achievement, Super Cup glory. I don't know what it means, but I'm assuming it means winning this. Um, that's technically the treble for us as well this season because we won the charity shield and apparently that counts. Um, so, you know, City might have won the tile, but we've won... You know, we've won most things. Uh, let's put it that way. Let's take a little look at the stats for the Champions League. This episode is only like 11 minutes in. I I'm shocked as to how this has even happened. But there you go. Alessandro Salvi, best assister in the Champions League with 11 assists in the Champions League. I don't even know if we've played 11 games. Six? Uh, oh, no, we've played 13 games, I think. Um, so, actually, that's still a fantastic record. Fabio with nine goals. What a season we've had. We finally got our name on the trophy. I almost feel a bit underwhelmed, and I don't know why. I think it's because the game wasn't even that tense. We won 4-0. Wow. Um, impressive is all I can really say. Ruthlessly impressive. Let's look at the squad so we can have a little look at the stats for a bit. Baltam, top goal scorer over the entire season in the end, thanks to his performances over the last couple of games, because I think he got two in the FA Cup final and a hat-trick in the Champions League final. 32 goals from left wing. Astonishingly good. Just astonishingly good. Peter also got 30 goals, though, and that's what I set for him. It's a shame he didn't score in the last few games of the season, but what can you do? Fabio only 21, but still not bad. At least Salvi broke into double figures, as did Philip Eisler, which is great to see. Assists, four, oh, 44, sorry. 44 assists this season for Alessandro Salvi. It, it's incredible. I, I cannot believe how many assists he's managed to get in such a short space. 45 games, 44 assists. That's truly amazing. Peter's got 12 as well. Beltan with uh, 9. Fabio only with 6. That's a shame, but there, what can you do? Player of the match was Baltan with 11 and Salvi with 10, Peter with 7, Fabio only with the uh, 4, which is surprising. Best cast completion, Pillbeam! Hey, G Pills. Um, insane. Just truly astonishing. Um, so, what I want to know from you guys now at this point, if you're still with me, which I hope you have. In fact, if you've enjoyed this episode so far, leave a like on the video. If we can get like a thousand, because we've finally done it, that would be superb. Um, but also, let me know. I really do want to know what your guys' favourite moments from the save were. And don't forget, tomorrow or maybe the next day, depending on how long it takes to simulate, um, there will be another video, which is the looking forward. So those of you that are new to the channel, basically what I do is I sim 20 years into the future uh, with all the players on my shortlist i.e. the ones on the team. Uh, I, I retire as a manager and then we sim into the future and see how their careers turned out basically um, over the course of the sort of with the say have we continued on it and see how Wimbledon would have done and see what else would have happened uh, in that spell. But also because the reason we go 20 years is so we can see if any of them go into management after that. But of course because the database is so large at the moment it's going to take quite some time. So if there isn't a video tomorrow um, then that is why but the one will be after the day it will be the day after that. So um, just in case of anything like that as well if there's anything you do want to see from the future save do let me know in the comments. If I've recorded it by then i'm sorry but it won't be in there um if i don't think of it myself but just in case um i've managed to take that long and the simulation takes that long it's gonna be an overnight job then do let me know of anything you want to see uh in the future like in terms of uh, what you want me to show you guys about the future of the save as well as that so yeah but what is your favorite moment as well from the save so far like for me it kind of can't not be in round baltam's hat trick in the champions league final but at the same time there's also things like that game where we turned the 2-1 defeat at nottingham forest into a 3-2 win with that ridiculous tactic there's oh god what else is Everton's late goal against Barcelona to send us into extra time against them. There's so many things. That 4-1 win in the uh, League Cup final over Fulham was fantastic for me as well. I really enjoyed that one. Winning the Johnston's paint trophy in the way that we did. That playoff final against, was it QPR? I think it was, where Colin Murphy was the hero winning some great tackles up the pitch. All sorts of things. What is your favourite moment of the save so far? Do let me know in the comments. I'd be very, very pleased to hear that, guys. And I really hope you have enjoyed this save um, because I really, really have. It's been... I actually feel like it's almost better than Portsmouth away. Okay, we didn't have ourselves a Millington, but Fabio has been more than that in a way because he's been with us for such a long time. It's impressive. I've, I don't think I've actually had a player that's come stayed with us from the championship to actually winning a, an FA, uh, a Champions League final. Um, but Fabio, obviously he was only on loan then, but my God, what a decision it was to manage to actually get him in on that permanent deal because for a while it looked like it wouldn't happen, but we managed to get him in in January. And after a struggling start, he did make the difference um, for us in the end. Wow. Um, is there anything else we can look at? Is like a best 11 or a where are they now maybe thing that we can take a look at? I might as well add that on now. Right, guys. I've decided to show you this screen because we haven't actually been on this screen for ages. So, um, hello. Look at this. Hey, hey, look. 
Someone was actually talking about this the other day, that they wish that the FM would put in a system where you could become rivals with the team. You can, and that is it. We've become a rival with Manchester City due to our league campaigns over the years with them over the last few seasons. We have now got an official derby sort of, well, not derby, but rivalry with Manchester City, which is superb. So let's take a little look. Favourite personnel, Peter Achibar, and even Nelson Duarte, big Nel Nel, is up there. Um... Ah, see, this is what I mean. I wasn't sure if really bringing him back would have been much good for us. He's on stupid money as well. I just think that it wouldn't have been much point. Um, so look at this. Look at this. Manquillo. Jake Reeves. Of course, Jakey Reeves. Uh, Brian Gomez is in there. Fabio is an icon. Uh, Sam Farmer is, of course. Ramsalar. Baltam, of course he's right, an icon. Salvi is in there as well. Um, weirdly, and this is a little bit odd for me, I am now an icon, but so is Roman Masek. Of all people, the Wimbledon fans clearly really took to Roman Masek, and I'm glad that they did that. I really, really am. This, according to the game at the moment, is our best 11, but I think it hasn't had time to induct players from this season, so it's not actually technically counting those at the moment. Galfrescoli in goal there, as you can see. Javi Manquillo at right back with 246 appearances. Mark Anderson made 216 appearances for us in the middle there, which is superb to see. Nenad Plan Agent Nenad still in there. Gomez at left bank there. Uh, Salvi, of course. Masek, Fabio, Baltam on the left. But up top, amazingly, Adam Kirk up top with Alessandro, not Alessandro, um, Alexander Peter, which is surprising, I've got to say. James Loveridge there. What happened to Jamie Loveridge? Uh, he retired at the age of 27. We were his last club. That's a shame. Let's do a where are they now and see where some of those players that used to play for us are. Right, sorry about that, guys. When I clicked the thing to ask him about the where are they now bit, the game just froze for like 30 seconds. I genuinely thought that we were going to lose the Champions League final because I haven't saved it, not since the FA Cup game. Oh, wow. Okay. So, players that have left the club that are in there like that. We've got Nenad Planich is at Southampton. Mark Anderson is at Konya Sport, interestingly. Adam Kirk plays for Bristol City. Luis Ribeiro, remember him, plays for West Bromwich Albion. Jake Reeves is at Stevenage. Other players to feature in that side are James Loveridge, Barry Fuller, and Lyle Taylor. So, James Loveridge retired at the age of 27. Why has that disappeared? I swear that was... What is going on with this game today? Um, Barry Fuller retired at the age of 35. So, he played for Gateshead for a little bit after he left us. And Lyle Taylor, where is Lyle? Uh, oh, he's a director of football. Very nice, Lyle. Un unemployed director of football, albeit, but nonetheless a director of football. He joined Bullier Sport after he uh, left us, but there you go. So, I honestly lost the words. We've actually managed to do it. Um, third ever Champions League win on FM. Um, really, really pleased with it. And I actually can't wait to get stuck into uh, the new save, which is going to be a really, really um, interesting project, hopefully. Anyway, I'll explain a little bit about it now. Uh, there will be a vote for the manager on the new save, but I'll put that up in a separate video where I'm going to go through it for those of you that aren't actually watching this video at this point. So basically, the new save is going to be building a nation with Midtjylland uh, over in Denmark. Now, the idea behind it is that obviously we're going to try and do well with the club, but the main thing we're going to try and do is boost the Danish league overall to actually make it the number one league, not just the number one team, uh, which is much more difficult than just winning things with one team because what we're going to have to do is build the entire league up. Now, the way we're going to do that is by, of course, invent or not inventing, but doing the youth conveyor belt idea I did at Red Star, where we literally only signed players that were under the age of 18, basically. And that way we brought as many through as possible, and those that didn't work out, we sold to other clubs. But what we're going to do in this save is every time a player that doesn't work out, but is still pretty decent, because obviously we wouldn't have signed them otherwise, in theory, we will be selling those to other clubs in Denmark. Now, the other thing we won't be doing is poaching players from other clubs in Denmark. No player will be signed from another Danish club, because that way we'll, because if we do that, we're weakening them. Um, so we're going to have to build our own youth academy up to the max out the facilities so we can bring through players ourselves because obviously we want to get through some Danish talent as well and that's how we're going to have to do it basically that's the idea behind the save and I'm really looking forward to doing it because it's kind of going to encompass everything I love about FM which is bringing through the youth scouting the young regions and also just trying to improve an entire nation's worth and I think it's going to be really really fun I'm really really looking forward to it I hope you guys are too I'm going to try and bring through some of the ideas that I've had towards the end of this save um, in sort of every single video so we really do get a much more polished product so to speak for you guys to watch hopefully every single day uh, that's the plan on that one anyway um, if you have enjoyed this season do drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed this save drop a like on the video and do let me know what your favorite moment was uh, of rebuilding afc wimbledon as well and uh, of course yeah if you are new to the channel and this is the first video of mine that you're actually seeing then do subscribe uh because we're going to do lots more stuff like this if you know if i decide to make videos for fm17 which i can't see any reason why i wouldn't then obviously we'll do another rebuilding save at the start of that game as well so is there anything else I wanted to quickly talk about? I don't think there is. There'll be a retrospective slash looking forward episode uh, either tomorrow or the day after. Depends. But if you've got any ideas what you want to see in that, do let me know in the comments anyway. Um, that way I can show it if, of course, I haven't recorded it by then. There'll be like a vloggy video that goes up the day after that, which I'll explain stuff to do with the new series. And of course, the manager vote. But also, why not let me know on this video too who you want to see be the manager uh, for the next series 
that I do, which will be uh, building a nation with Midland. Uh, you know, like I mean, look at the players we've got. We've got it can't be anyone that's real, by the way. Just for, in case any, I know George Pilbeam would be a funny one to do, but we can't use real players for that because it's just for obvious reasons. Uh, so it's always a region player that gets to be the manager in the next save, hence why Slavi Dancev is. So do let me know who you want to see as the manager as well. So thank you so much for watching this series, guys, and sticking with me for 100 and what, 128, is it? 128 episodes? Thank you so much. I really can't appreciate uh, can't appreciate it enough. I really, really do. So, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will join you uh, for another video very, very soon and more stuff into the future. See you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.